Hi, and welcome back to the chemical change series. Now we've been learning about chemical and physical changes, and it's nice for us to think about this. So, let's have a look at the picture. A very, very common thing is lighting a match, and we've got a nice big flame here. We've got a nice bit of the matchstick itself, and we can see that down here we've got things going on. We can see that we've got energy coming out, Right, so we have light energy coming out. We've got heat energy coming out. We've got a change of color. So from this, we could almost say that we definitely have a chemical change. Just something nice and simple. So let's go through a few more examples on the way through. Okay, let's work on this. Now, this is probably one of the easiest things to remember, but most people don't. When we are talking about what's going on in any sort of thing, we tend to write little equations. Now this expression here is an equation. Now in math an equation would have an equal sign there. But in science we use an arrow because it basically says that these reactants, what we start with, change into products. Now this is normally given to a chemical change. So please try not to use an equal sign here for this. Now, I've given us two definitions. Reactants, the name scientists give to chemicals we start with, or we mix together, if you like. Now, products are the names of the chemicals we make by mixing chemicals together. Now, that sounds really easy, but as we'll see later on, when you do the sections on photosynthesis and respiration to start with, you'll see that this becomes much, much more sensical. Now, we saw how energy has a law that says the energy we start with and the energy we end up with are equal, the law of conservation of energy. There is a similar law that says the law of conservation of mass, which means the mass of what we start off with equals the mass of what we got here. But as we've been shown before, Mass is really a measure of the number of particles. Or atoms, if you like. So, the number of particles we start with and the number of particles we finish with must be the same. Uh -huh. So, let's move on from there. Right, chemical, I like to think of chemical change as being like playing with Lego. If I gave you 30 pieces of Lego and said, make something, and then I said to you right now, I want you to take those pieces of Lego apart and make something new. Well, that is what a chemical change is all about. Right, we pull them apart and we readjust them. We make a different pattern we still end up with the same number of Lego. So I might say to you, right, here's your 30 pieces of Lego. Make something. Now take it apart and use all 30 pieces to make something different. Now take it apart, use all 30 pieces to make something different again. And this will be an example of chemical change. And the fact that we have to use all 30 pieces all the time is showing us that the law of conservation of mass exists. In other words, we can't just leave pieces of Lego out or we can't leave atoms out when we're changing something and we're doing a chemical change. So let's look at this one. I've got some hydrogen gas and I'm going to burn it in air. And we know it's going to make water vapour, or I know it's going to make water vapour. So let's have a look at it. So as we go through here, let's look at what happens. So if I count the number of atoms over here on this side, I've got 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I've got four. Oxygen, I've got one, two. Now, arrow means rearrange or change into. Let's count them up on this side. H's, I got one, two, three, four. O, I've got one, two. So, this number and this number are the same. Good. This number, goodness gracious me, I can't think of what I'm doing. This number and this number are the same. Excellent. So, this has changed. This and this are in different patterns now. We've changed hydrogen and oxygen gas into water. And water is different to hydrogen and it's different to oxygen gas. So we must have a chemical change. And as we can see down at the bottom, I've just said that chemicals are not created or destroyed. So in other words, we don't discard them or throw them in the bin. We simply rearrange. And that's all we ever, ever do. And I hope that makes some sense.